hello everyone welcome to the makri virtual hope you are doing good today i'm going to continue the same module that is a database design concepts and the new chapter that is chapter number 16 recovery system in the last class in the last class we have discussed or we have finished with chapter number 15 that is a concurrency control now i'm going to start with the new chapter that is chapter number 16 that is a recovery system so what is a recovery system first of all so anything what we recover or any any system that is used to recover the things that is used to recover the material that is known as a recovery manager so anything that I, I access anything that i use that is known as a recovery manager that is known as a recovery that is recover from the backup or recover from the memory systems recovery management that is known as a recovery systems so any system and any system that is used for the recovery that is that is used for the various recovery management that is used for the various backup resources that is known as the recovery system so this is a uh, theoretical that is uh, used that is a recovery system this is a recovery system like any other device is subject to failure a com sorry a computer system like any other device is subject to failure so whenever we use the recovery system that is used for the failure that is denoted by the various terms that is denoted by the failure uh, so recovery system is a device that is used that is subject to the failure from a variety of causes so system crashes or system fails due to the different varieties due to the system uh, due to different uh, failure that is used for example disk crash uh, power outage software error fire in the machine room even soft sabotage so these are the various failures that arise in the computer system so in any 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 failure information may be lost so whatever the failure that is occur the information is lost therefore the database must be or database system must take action in advance to ensure that the atomicity and durability properties of the transactions that is introduced in chapter number 14 are preserved that is there will be a system that is used to recover the system that is used to reproduce the system that is there are different properties of the transaction that is taken place that is atomicity and the durability an integral part of the database system is a recovery scheme that can restore the database to the consistent state so there will be a procedure there will be a mechanism to uh, use the or there is a concept that is used by the database system to recover the scheme that is known as a recovery management or that is known as a recovery system and that is known as a recovery scheme that can restore the database to the consistent state that has or that existed before the failure that is before getting the failure or before uh, the failure has arrived there will be a recovery scheme that is available there will be a scheme that is available that recovers from the failure the recovery scheme also provides higher availability so availability means the we can say the information that is available is in high form that is high availability that is it minimizes the time for which database is not usable after a failure that is the time that is used after the database is failure is minimized why because uh, before the failure we take the backup so when whenever we take the backup so automatically the data will be available whenever there will be a failure whenever we, there will be a data lost now uh, next is what are the failure classification that is why why there is a failure in the database system or why there is a failure in the computer system so there are different types of failure that occurs in a system a system each of which needs to be dealt with in a different manner so there are so many failure that is available and there are so many we can say the uh, fo folds or error that occurs in the system in this chapter we shall consider only the different types of or following types of failure so these are the different types of failure that occurs in the uh, that arises in the computer system so the first failure is transaction failure so there are two types of failure that may cause a transaction to fail these are the failure that arises when a transaction is going to fail what are the two types of failure that is a logical error and the system error that means uh, whenever we use the system for any, any maintenance that is a logical error that is whenever the logic is incorrect so whenever a logic is incorrect for the system whenever a logic is incorrect for the transaction that is known as a logical error that is i have not used the logical error or i have not used the program very correctly that is known as a logical error so this is the transaction may not or can no longer continue with its normal execution before because of some internal conditions what are the various internal conditions such as the bad input data not found these are the logical error and it, it is generally produced within the programming that is a logical error
so uh, this this can be done because of the some internal conditions such as the bad input does not found overflow or the resource limited exceeds so what, whatever the reason that causes the logical error that arises from the system the next is the system error that uh, that uh, the system produces or uh, we can say the gives or entered into an undesirable state that is for example deadlock that is a system error that is a condition uh, from where the transaction never go further never proceed backward that is there is a condition that is there is no solution afterward that is a deadlock condition that is a system error as a result of which a transaction cannot continue with its normal execution the transaction however can be re-executed at a later time it can be re-executed no doubt but at a later time there's a probability that the system will uh, crash system will not arrive these are the transaction failure one is a logical error one is a system error next is the system crash so one is a transaction failure next whole system will be crashed the hardware parts will be crashed so there is a hardware malfunction or a bug in the database system or software or the operating system that causes the loss of the content of a volatile storage and brings transaction uh, processing to a halt that means there will be a, a, any error that may be a software error that may be a hardware error that may be a hardware malfunctioning or a bug in the database software or the operating system that causes the loads of the or loss of the contents of a volatile storage so whatever the content that is available there will be a loss of the content of the volatile storage and brings the transaction processing to a halt the content of the non volatile storage remains intact and do not corrupt it and next is a disk failure that is a whatever the hard disk whatever the uh, rom disk we are using in the computer that fails that is a disk failure so this says a disk block loses its contents as a result of either a head crash or a failure during a data transfer operation so whatever the failure whatever the operation that is used that is as a result of the head crash or a failure during a data transfer operation copies of the data on other disk or archival backups or territory media such as the dvd tapes are used to recover from the failure so whenever we, there will be a disk failure there are multiple backup devices that is available that uh, gives the backup that recovers the data whenever there will be a failure on the disk to determine how the system should recover from the failure we need to identify the failure modes of those devices used to storing the data next we must consider how these failure mode affects the contents of the database we can uh, then propose algorithms to ensure database consistency and transaction atomicity despite the failure and this algorithm also known as the recovery algorithm have two parts so there are two parts of the recovery algorithm that is used first is action taken or the actions taken during normal execution processing to ensure that enough information exists to allow recovery from the failure so actions uh, must be taken during the normal execution or normal transaction processing to ensure that enough information is available to recover from the failure so that the available information that is more than sufficient information is available to recover from the failure then an point says actions taken after a failure to recover the database content to a state that ensure database consistency transaction atomicity and the durability so actions must be taken to ensure that the after the failure uh, there will be a mechanism to recover the database content to a state that ensures the database consistency transaction atomicity and the durability now this is the kinds of the failure or types of failure that arises one is a transaction failure that contains a system error a logical error one is a whole system crash that is system crash then there will be a disk failure now next is the storage that is uh, what are the various storage media in which the data will be stored so storage media is divided into three category it depends on their speed capacity and the resistance to failure it is divided into three categories one is a volatile storage one is a non volatile storage one is the stable storage these are the three categories volatile non volatile and the stable storage a uh, stable storage or uh, more accurately and approximation therefore uh, plays a critical role or uh, in the recovery algorithm so stable storage is more accurate storage because the data is stable in the stable storage now first is the stable storage implementation that is how to use the stable storage implementation so to implement uh, stable storage we need to replicate the needed information Th replicate mean duplicate the needed information in several non volatile storage media that is usually a disk 
with independent failure mode and to update the information in a control manual to ensure that the failure during data transfer does not damage the needed information that is a stable storage information that the data will not damage or that failure whenever the failure occurs that will be information is uh, in the control manual to ensure that the failure during data transfer does not change the needed information that the information is not needed or information is not destroyed whenever there will be a failure in the data transfer there will be a control that damage the needed information that is a stable storage implementation. I recall from the chapter number 10 when we uh, studied about the RAID, that is a redundant array of independent systems uh, that guarantees that the failure of a single disk would not result in a loss of data. So whenever there will be a RAID uh, in this, uh, whenever there will be a failure of a single disk that not results in a loss of the data. The simplest and the fastest form of RAID is a mirrored disk which keeps mirrored disk which keeps two copies of each blocks on the separate disk so this is a mirror disk that ke keeps the two copies or we can say that makes the two copies of the each block on the separate disk that is that there will be two copies one on the one block another is on the another block and both the blocks are used for the data access other form of rate offers lower cost but at the expense of lower performance so um, uh, other than the rate there are multiple uh, options that is available they have a lower cost but they have a lower performance also rate system however cannot guard against data loss due to the disaster such as the fires or the flooding so um, rate system does not guard against the data losses due to the disaster that is available such as the fires or the flood many system stores archival backups of tapes off-site to guard against the disaster or such disaster so many system that is used or many system stores the archival backup that is used in the tapes to guard against the such disasters however since tapes cannot be carried off site continually updates since the most recent time that tapes were carried off sites would be lost in such a disaster more secure systems keep a copy of each block of a stable storage at a remote site writing it out over a computer network in addition to storing the block on the local disk system. Since the blocks are output to a remote system as and when required once the output is complete. That is a remote backup whenever there will be a disaster such as the fire or flood that is a natural calamity there will be a system to backup or get the backup from the uh, these disaster that is known as or that is done by the RAID systems. So, such as the fire or the flood occur, so that will be uh, that uh, that is provided by the remote backup. In the remainder of the section, we discuss how storage media can be protected from the failure during data transfer. So, why we are using the storage media? What is the advantage of using the storage media that is uh, protect from the failure during the data transfer? Block transfer between memory and disk storage can result in so, but whenever there will be a block transfer that uh, uh, that uh, gives the between the memory and the disk storage can result in the three category. One is a successful completion, one is a partial failure, one is a total failure. So whenever there will be a block transfer between the memory and the disk storage can result in a three categories. One is a successful completion that is uh, successfully the data will be transferred between the memory and the disk storage that is a successful transfer or completion that is the transferred information arrives safely at its destination so but wherever, wherever the data will be gone that the information will be arrived to the proper destination next partial failure that is a failure that occurred in the midst of the transfer and the destination block has correct or incorrect information that is a failure occurred in the midst of the transfer that means it is occurred in the midst means the middle of the transfer and the destination block has incorrect information that is there is no correct information about the transfer or the failure that is available in the partial failure then there is a total failure that is a failure that occurs sufficiently early during the transfer of that the destination block remain intact that is a total failure so there are three types of failure that is available one is a successful completion one is a partial failure one is a total failure we require that if a data transfer failure occurs, the system detect it and invoke a recovery procedure to restore the block to a consistent state. So if there is a data transfer failure or there will be a data transfer failure that occurs, 
the system detects it and invoke a recovery management or invoke a recovery procedure to restore the data to restore the contents or restore the block to the consistent state to do so the system and maintain two physical block for each leap logical block and the output operation is executed first of all write the information on the first physical disk so take the two physical disk for each logical disk block and uh, how, how this uh, can be done so first of all write the information onto the first physical block so first physical block will be used to write the information then when the first write complete successfully that is the when the first block is or the when the first physical block is over then moves to the second physical block then next the output is completed only after the second write completes successfully so the output is completed or output is gain uh, or output is going to complete only after the second uh, write completes uh, successfully or completes successfully so whenever there will be a two write that complete successfully uh, or that write successfully then only the data will be or then only the output operation will be carried out if the system fails while the blocks are being written it is possible that the two copies of the blocks are inconsistent with each other so if the system fails uh, while blocks are being written so in case uh, if we are writing on the systems we are writing on the blocks and in between the system fails then it is possible that the two copies of a blocks are inconsistent with each other during recovery for each block the system would need to examine two copies of the block so whenever there will be a recovery for the each block the system will need to examine two copies of the block that is available and if both the systems and no detectable error exists then no further actions are necessary that is there is no further action that is required for the detectable error and if the system detects an error in one block then it replaces its contents with the content of the other block so if the whole uh, two failure uh, two blocks fail then there will be a difficulty if one of the block fail then the data will be transferred from the other block or a uh, content will be transferred to the another block now next is the data access that is how to access the data what are the various techniques that is used to access the data so as we saw in the chapter number 10 the database system resides permanently on the non volatile storage so database system must resides permanently on the non volatile storage that is usually the disk and only parts of the system or parts of the database are in memory at any time the database is partitioned into the fixed storage unit known as a block so database that is required that is available into the uh, fixed length storage unit that is the, uh, known as a block so blocks means a database that is divided into fixed storage media that is known as the blocks and blocks are the units of the data transfer to and from the disk that is whenever there will be a database whenever there will be concept of the database that is divided into the fixed partition fixed length partition fixed length storage that is known as the blocks and blocks are nothing but the units of the data that is transferred to and from disk that is whenever we transfer the data from the disk to the memory disk to the storage that is known as the blocks and that may contain the several data item that is available in the data concepts this assumption is realistic for most data processing applications such as the bank or the university transactions input of information from the disk to main memory and then output the information back to, to the disk so transactions get the input or get the information from the disk to the main memory and then output the information back to the disk so from the disk the information will be available and uh, the output will be again going to the disk the input and output operations are done in the block unit so whatever the input whatever the in output that is given that is available in the disk block the blocks residing on the disk are known as the physical blocks so whatever the block that is available on the or resides on the disk that is known as the physical blocks and the blocks that is on the temporary basis in the main memory that is a buffer, buffer block and the area of a memory uh, where block resides on a temporary basis that is known as a disk buffer so one is available on the main memory that is a buffer disk that is a temporary one is the area of a memory where the block resides temporary that is known as a disk buffer and there is a concept that is a blocks that resides on the memory on the disk are known as a physical blocks and the block movement between the disk and the main memory are initiated by using two operations one is the input that transfer the physical b or a block b to the main memory 
then output that transfers the buffer block B to the disk and replaces the appropriate physical block there. That is the input and the output. So one is a physical block B to the main memory, then the buffer block B to the disk. That is the output. Conceptually, each transaction TI has a private work area in which copies of the data item exist and updated by the TI are kept. The system creates this work area when the transaction is initiated. The system removes it when the transaction fails or when the transaction either commits or aborts. Each data item X to be kept in the work area of the transaction TI that is denoted by the X sign. And the transaction interact with the database by transferring the data from the work area or to the data transfer. And we transfer the data by using the two operations. So we input the data or end outputting the data and the transfer will be taken by two operations. One is a read operation, one is the write operation. Read means assigns the value of the data item X to the local variable X sign. It executes this operation as follows. So this how to how to read the operation that is what are the various concepts to read the operation. If the block BX on which the X resides is not in the main memory, it issues an input block. Then it assigns to the XI the value of X from the buffer block. The, that is a read that assigns a value to the local variable x. Then there is a write that assigns a value of local variable x i to the data item x in the buffer block. That is a write block. It executes this operation as follows. So what is the procedure to execute the operation? That is as follows. If block b x on which the x resides is not in the main memory, it issues the input block. Then it assigns a value of x i to the x in the buffer b x. Note that both the operations may require the transfer of block from disk to the main memory. That is, uh, both the operation that is required, that is a read and the write block, that is a read and the write um, block that is required, that transfer the block from the disk to the main memory. They do not, however, specifically require the transfer of a block from the main memory to the disk. So there is no transfer or there will be a transfer of the block from the main memory to the disk and from this to the main memory. The next is a buffer block is eventually written out to the disk either because the buffer manager needs the memory space or because the database system wishes to reflect the change to be on the disk. So buffer block is eventually written up to the disk either whenever there will be a buffer manager that needs the memory or the database system that wishes to reflect the change to the be on the disk. We shall say that the database system performs a force output of buffer B if it issues an output B. And whenever there will be a transaction that needs to accept data X on the for the first time, it must be read, uh, use the read operation, then it will use the write operation. And whenever there will be output, that is operation that is carried out. So first of all, it will get the write operation, then it will get the read operation. Now the next topic is recovery and atomicity. That is how to recover the data and how to provide or how to gain the atomicity of a transaction. So consider our same example that is a banking system and a transaction TI that transfers the rupees 50 from account A to the account B with initial values of A and B being 1000 and the 2000 respectively. So there are two values, one is a 1000, one is a 2000 and the 50 will be transferred from one account to the another account. Suppose that a system crash has occurred during the execution of TI. So if there is a system crash that occurred during the execution of the TI after the output BI has been taken place, but before the output B was executed, where BA and the BB denotes the buffer uh, blocks on which A and B resides. Since the memory contents were lost, we do not know the fate of the transaction. So since the memory content was lost, so do we do not have a, know about the transaction, where the transaction has gone, where the data has gone. And when the system restarts, the value of A would be 950 and the while that of uh, B would be 2000. That is, the amount will be detected from the A but cannot be carried forward to the B because uh, in between the power has been failed or the system has been crashed, which is clearly inconsistent with the atomicity requirement for the transaction. Atomicity says if one uh, or the amount is debited from one account that it must be credited from the or from the another account. That is, if one account is credit, then another account must be debited from that same amount. 
Unfortunately, there is no way to find out by examining the database system what blocks has been output. So it is possible that a transaction completed updating the database on a stable storage from the initial stage with the value of A and B being 1000 and the 1950. It is also possible that a transaction may not uh, affect the stable storage at all and the values of A and B are 950 and the 2000 respectively. Or that the database uh, B will be updated or the database B was output that is not be updated. So it must be updated in the space that must be updated that gives the output on a uh, specified manner that gives the uh, we can say the uh, the values must be credited and the debited from the different accounts. So if the, there is a two transaction that is a transaction A and the B and transaction A contains uh, the 1000 rupees and the transaction B contains 950 rupees and if the amount is debited from the transaction A that it must be credited from the transaction B. That is, uh, both the transactions must be in the atomicity state that is a, uh, that is available in the transaction management. Uh, the main goal is to perform either all of all or no database modification that is made by the TI. However, if TI perform multiple database modifications, so if there is a multiple database modification that occur, there are several output operations that may be required or must be required for the transaction management. And to achieve the goal of atomicity, we must first output to the stable storage information describing the modification without modifying the database itself. Now, uh, whatever the information that is required in which there is no modification, there is no content that is required that is aborted transaction must persist in the database. Now, next is the log records. That is, what are the log records in which we can maintain the database, we can maintain the data access. That is the log records. So the most widely used structure for recording database modification is a log. That is a log that, that shows whatever the modification, whenever there will be insertion of data, whenever there will be a deletion of data, whatever the modification that is done, that is known as the log. So more widely used structure for recording database modification is the log. That is a sequence of the, or log is a sequence of the log records regarding all the updates activities in the database. That is every update activity that is available that must be recorded in the log file. So it is li uh, just like a uh, daily routine log file. That is whatever the expenses we are done, whatever the income that we are gained so in the monthly basis, weekly basis or in the day basis also that is a log. In the same way, in the whatever the modification, whatever the update that is available in the database, uh, whatever the modification that is uh, available in the database that must be maintained in the log. There are several types of log records. Uh, there, are, there are different types of log records available. An update log record describes a single database size. That is, uh, whenever there will be update log record, that is a, 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 a there is a requirement of the update activities that is available in the database. And this contains multiple fields. That is, whenever the transaction maintains a log file that contains a various field that contains multiple fields. Now, what are the fields that is available in the log records? These are the three fields that is available in the log records. One is a transaction identifier. So that is a unique identifier that identifies a transaction. That is a unique identifier of the transaction that performs the right operation. So whenever there will be a right operation, that is a transaction identifier that performs the same activity or that gives a unique identification of that transaction that performs the right operation. Then uh, data item identifier, that is a unique identifier of the data item written. So whatever the data item that is written, written that is also available in the, uh, that is also a data item identifier. Typically, it is a location on the disk, that is uh, where the data item will be located on the disk, that is the data item identifier. Then old value, that is the value of the data item that is prior to the write. Then new value, that is the data item uh, that is available after the write. And we represent an update log record, that is a TI, XI, V1, V2 indicating that transaction TI has performed a write on the data item XI, XJ as a value, VI before the write and as a value V2 after the write. Other special log records that exist to record significant events during transaction processing such as a part of the transaction and the commit or abort of a transaction. Among the types of log records, what are the types of log records? One is a start, then commit, then abort. That is the transaction TI has been started then transaction TI has been committed, then transaction TI has been aborted. So there are three, three parts, one is, a, one is a start, one is a commit, one is the abort. And we shall introduce several types of log records later. So whenever there is a transaction that performs a write record, it is essential that the rec log record for that 
right to be created and added to the log so whatever the log record that is available whatever the content that is available that is available in the database modification now for the log records to be useful for recovery from the system and the disk failure that is available uh, the log must resides in the stable storage Now next is the database modification that is uh, what type of modification is done in the database system that is the database modification. So as we noted earlier a transaction creates a log record prior to modify or prior to the modification or modifying the database. So there will be a log record that is maintained prior to the modification of the database because a log record contains the whatever the activities that is modification in the database. So it must be kept or it must be produced it must create a log record prior to the modifying the database that is prior to the modification it must be updated it must be available in the log file the log records allow the system to undo the changes that is made by the transaction so what is a, a log record that allows the system to undo the changes to uh, undo changes means uh, whatever the change that is required to undo the change that is made by a transaction in the event that the transaction must be aborted so whenever the transaction is aborted that must be uh, log out that must be we can say the undo the changes that is available in the transaction they allow the system also to redo the changes made by the transaction if the transaction has been commit so whenever whenever there will be a transaction that means undo the transaction undo the changes that is occur and redo the changes whenever there will be a commit operation so whenever there will be a, uh, abort operation the, the transaction will be uh, aborted or the transaction will be no longer required and whenever there will be a commit the transaction is required or the log is required in order for us to understand the role of these log records in a recovery we need to consider the steps a transaction takes in modifying a data item so uh, in order to uh, understand the role of these re log records that is what are the log record that is available in the records uh, or recovery we need to consider the steps a transaction takes in modifying a data item so whatever the step that is required that is required for modifying a data item so these are the various steps so these are various we can see the steps that is used to maintain the data item first point says the transaction performs some computations in its own private part of the main memory that is the transaction must maintain its own computation part it, its uh, own uh, private part of the main memory then the transaction modifies the data items that is whatever the transaction that modi modify the data item in the disk buffer in the main memory that holding the data item so whatever the data item that is available that holds the data item in the transaction management so the transaction performs some computations in the private part of the main memory the tra tra transaction also modifies the data block in the disk buffer in the main memory holding the data item then database system executes the output operation that writes the uh, data blocks to the disk so whatever the data block that is available that writes the data block to the disk so these are the various steps that is how to modify the data item so first of all performs a computation in the private part then uh, modifies the system or modify the data block then executes the op output operation so we can or we see a transaction modifies the database that is if it performs an update on a disk buffer modification of database means performing a update on the disk buffer or on the disk itself update to the private part of the main memory do not count as a database modification so whatever the whenever there will be update on the private part of the memory that do not count as a database modification and if a transaction does not modify the database until it has been committed so if the transaction does not modify the database that is required until it is committed it is known as a deferred or deferred modification technique that is there is no modification technique that is available in the deferred transaction and there will be immediate modification technique also that is required whenever the transaction is still active that is a deferred transaction there will be immediate modification technique and deferred modification has a overhead that transaction needs to make local copies of all updated items further if a transaction reads a data item that is had been updated it must read the values from its local copy so there are two there are two types of techniques one is a deferred modification techniques one is the immediate modification techniques so deferred modification has a lower overhead as a overhead the transaction needs to make local copies of the updated data items further if a transaction reads a data item that has been updated now uh, the recovery algorithm that is used 
that is described in the chapter that supports the immediate modification that is required in the database. A recovery algorithm must take into account a variety of factors. So there are multiple factors that is available in the recovery algorithm. First point says the possibility that a transaction may, may have committed although some of its database modification exists only in the disk buffer in the main memory and not in the database on the disk. The possibility that a transaction may have modified the database while in the active state and as a result of a subsequent failure may not do anything. Now, uh, there are two operations that is required. So, th there are two operations that is used. One is the undo operation that, uh, that undoes the old values. One is a redo operation that sets the new values at the redo operation. Next is a concurrency control and the recovery that is how to control the concurrency and how to recover the system that is how to use the concurrency control and the recovery. So this says if the concurrency control schemes allow the data item x that have been modified by a transaction t1 to be further modified by another transaction t2 before t1 come in then undoing the effects of t1 by restoring the old value of x would also undo the effects of the t2. So whenever, whenever there will be a transaction, whenever there will be a modification that is allowed, that is the T2 must be allowed before the T1 commits. So undoing the effects of the T1 by restoring the old values of the X and also undoes the effects of the T2. To avoid such situations, to avoid such scenarios, recovery algorithm usually requires that the data item has been modified by a transaction, that is no other transaction can modify the data item until the first transaction commits or abort. So to avoid the such scenarios, recovery algorithm must be used or must be maintained or must be modified by a transaction that no other transaction can modify them until the first transaction commits or abort. So until the first transaction commits or abort, no other transaction can be taken up in the desired values. This requirement can be ensured by acquiring an exclusive lock on any, any updated data item and holding the lock until the transaction commits or in other words by using the strict two-phasing locking protocol. Snapshot isolation and validation based concurrency control techniques also require or also acquire the exclusive locks on the data item at the time of validation. And whenever, uh, whatever the technique that we are using, either a snapshot isolation or the validation that is used for the concurrency. Now next is the transaction commit. So we say that the transaction has been committed when it commits the log record. That is, whenever it, it fulfills the log record, we say that the transaction is commit, which is the last record of the transaction that is put to the stable storage. Now next is the using the log to redo and undo the operation. So we can also use the log records. We can also use uh, the log to recover or to use the undo and the redo operation. That is, whenever there will be a disk failure, uh, recover from the disk failure, system crash, and roll back the transaction using the normal operation. This is one of the example that is given over here. So one is a redo operation, that is means redoing the same operations. Then there will be undo operation, that is only uh, undo the operation that is used. This is one of the example that is used. Now next is a checkpoint. This is one of the important concepts, that is how to use a checkpoint or what are the various techniques that is used in the checkpoint. So checkpoint means whenever a system crash occurs, so whenever there will be a system failure, so there will be a checkpoint that is available. So we must consult the log to determine those transactions that needs to be redone and those that needs to be undone. So whenever there will be a system crash or whenever there will be a system uh, crash occurs, so we need the consult on we uh, consult the log system to ensure that the determine that the transaction needs to be undone or which transaction needs to be undone and which transaction needs to be redone. Or redo so which transaction is going to uh, further uh, s repeat is the same which transaction is going to the undone that is a checkpoint in principle we need to search the in entire log to determine this information so in a principal concept we need to search the entire log that is used to determine the concept or information there are two major difficulties that is used with this approach that is used with the checkpointing the first one is the search process is the time consuming so whenever we use the checkpoints we use the log system, we use the modification that is used, that is used to determine the information. So there are two uh, major difficulties that is available with this approach. One is it is very time consuming. The next one is most of the transaction that according to our algorithm needs to be redone, have already written their updates in the database. Because there are some duplicates of data that is uh, we must uh, uh, redo the operation, we must undo the operation, but we can not redo the operation. 
and to reduce these type of overhead we into introduce the checkpoint now what is the checkpoint performed the output is available on the stable storage all the log records currently residing in the main memory then output to the disk all modified buffer block so whatever the available whatever the output that is available that is available to the modified block buffer So output is available on the stable storage that is available on the checkpointing where the L is a list of the transaction that is active at the time of the checkpointing. And transactions are not allowed to perform any update action such as writing to a buffer block or writing to a log block while a checkpoint is in progress. So transactions are not allowed to perform any update action that is required such as writing on a buffer block or writing on a log blocks while a checkpoint is in uh, progress. The presence of a checkpoint L records in the log that allows the system to streamline the recovery procedure. So whatever the recovery procedure that is available, we are using the checkpoint for the system failure. This is the syntax that is used for the checkpointing. That is a left angle bracket and the right angle bracket and there will be a checkpoint L. Now next is the recovery algorithm. That is the next topic. So let's take a break right now. After 10 minutes, come back up from the break and start with the next topic. That is a recovery algorithm. Or what are the various recovery algorithms that is available or what are the various techniques that is available to recover the data whenever the, there is a system failure. So let's take a break then move to the recovery algorithm. So come back from the break now let's start the session again. So next topic is the recovery algorithm that is how what are the algorithms what are the various steps that is required to recover from the failure that is a recovery algorithm. So until now in discussing a recovery uh, we have identified the transaction that need to be redone or those uh, and those that, who, that need to be undone. So there are two transactions that needs to be redone that needs to be undone. But we have not given a precise algorithm for performing these actions. So there is no proper algorithm that is required that is available for performing the actions or performing the undone and the undo or redo operation. We are now ready to present the full recovery algorithm using log records for recovery from direction failures and a combination of the most recent checkpoint and the log records to recover from a system crash. So we now using the log records to maintain the recover or to recover from the transaction failure and a combination of the most recent checkpoints and the log records to the recover from the algorithm. The recovery algorithm that, that is described in this section require that the data items that have been updated by an uncommitted transaction cannot be modified by uh, any other transaction. So whatever the recovery algorithm, whatever the scenario, whatever the data item that is updated in the com uncommitted transaction cannot be modified by another transaction. So uh, only and only when the um, transaction is committed, the transaction will be modified or the transaction will be carried out by the uh, transaction that is either committed or aborted. We call this uh, instruction or uh, restriction that were discussed in the earlier in section 16.3.5. Now what is the transaction rollback? So first consider the transaction rollback during the normal operation that is not during the recovery from a system crash. So first of all consider the transaction rollback during the normal operation that is not during the recovery from a system crash. So rollback of a transaction TI is performed as follows. So whatever the rollback transaction that is performed, so whatever the, uh, uh, whenever we uh, use a rollback transaction that is performed that is as follows. The first point is the log is scanned backwards. So first of all the log that is maintained that is any any modification any changes that is maintained in the log. So first of all the log is uh, scanned backward and for each log record of TI of the form TI XJ V1 V2 that is found. Now how, how it is uh, going backward the value V1 is written into the data item XJ and the special redo only log record that is a TI XJ V1 is written in the log where V1 is a value that is being restored to the data item X during the rollback. These log records are sometimes known as the compensation log records. So these are the log records that is available that is known as the compensation log records. Such records do not need uh, undo information since we never need to undo such an undo operation. So there is no need to undo the operation, there is no need to redo the operation that is available. We shall explain later how they are used. So once the log record T1 start is found, the backward scan, scan is stopped. So once the, when, once the log record is found, whatever we need, the backward scan is stopped and the log record T aborts is written to the log. So the abort 
transaction must be written to the record that is written to the log that is available in the log record. Observe that every every update action performed by the transaction on behalf of the transaction, including actions that is taken to restore the data items to their old value that has been recorded in the log. Now, next is recovery after a system crash. So, whenever there will be a system crash, what are the various mechanisms? What are the various algorithms? What are the various steps that is required after a system crash? So, recovery actions when the database system is restarted after a crash takes place in two phases. So there are two actions that is available that is a recovery actions that is taken place when the database system is restarted after a crash that takes place in two phases the first phase is in the redo phase the system replays updates of all the transaction by scanning the log forward so redo means going forward and do means going backward the system replays update of all the transactions so whatever the update that is available so it replays uh, each and every transaction that is scanning the log forward from the last checkpoint the log records that are replayed includes a log record for a transaction that were rolled back before the system crashes and those that have not been committed when the system crash occurred this phase also determines all transaction that were incomplete at the time of the crash and must thereby be rolled back so whatever the transaction that is not complete the time and that will be rolled back that has been going backward in the redo phase So whatever the checkpoint that is available, whatever the scenario that is available that is used in the checkpoint or incomplete transaction that would either on either a T1 abort or TI abort or nor a TI commit records in the log. Now the specific steps that is taken while scanning the logs are as follows. So whatever the step that is required that is as follows. The list of the transactions to be rolled back undo list is initially set to the list L in the checkpoint L log record. So whatever the list of the transaction that is rolled back whatever the list of the transaction that is undo list that is available in the checkpoint L. And whenever a normal log record of the form TI, XI, V1, V2 or a redo a log record that is available, the operation is written. That the value V2 is written to the data item XJ. And whenever a log record of the form that is T1 start is found, TI is added to the undo list. And T1 abort that is it is removed from the undo list. So this is the first phase that is a redo phase. Now the second phase is undo phase. The system roll back all the transaction in the undo list. So whatever the system failure, whatever the system uh, content that is available that roll backs all the transaction in the undo list. It performs roll back by scanning the log backward from the end. So whatever the performance, whatever the roll back transaction that is available that is scanned from the end. Whenever it finds a log records belonging to a transaction in the undo list, it performs undo action just as if the log record has been found during the rollback of a failed transaction. So whatever the log, log record, whatever the content that is available, whatever the content that is belonging to a transaction in the undo list, it found to be undo action, that is just the log record that has been found during the rollback of the transaction. So whatever the rollback transaction that has been failed, that will be available in the log records. Next is, when the system finds a T1 or TI start, the log records of a transaction TI in the undo list, it starts a TI abort. The undo phase terminates once undo uh, list become empty that is the system has found t1 start or ti start log record for all the transactions that were initially do the undo list so this is the beginning of the loop that is the end of the loop crash this is at the abort condition now next is the buffer management that is uh, next topic is the buffer management that is how to man manage the buffer that is at the constraint stage that is the buffer management in this section, we consider the several uh, subtle details that are essential to the implementation of the cache recovery. So whatever the detail that is available that is essential to the implementation of the cache recovery, recovery scheme that I show the data consistency and imposes a minimal amount of overhead on the interaction with the database. So whatever the cache recovery scheme, whatever the data consistency and imposes a minimum amount of overhead that is available on the interaction with the database. So the first one is log record buffering so the first process is the log record buffering so far we have assumed that uh, every log record is output to the stable storage at the time it is created that is every uh, log record that is available that is the output to the stable storage that is available in the log records this assumption imposes a high overhead on system execution for several reasons typically output to stable storage is uh, in units of blocks in most cases a log record is must smaller than a block so whatever the log record that is available that is much smaller than the record 
the cost of, of outputting a blocks to the stable storage is sufficiently high that is it is desirable to output multiple log record at one time so as a result of log buffering a log record may reside in only main memory so whatever the log record that is available that is resides in only main memory that is in the ram for a considerable time before it is output to the stable storage so first of all it is available in the main memory then it is going to the stable storage since such a log records are lost if the system crashes we must impose the additional requirements of the on the recovery technique to ensure the transaction atomicity so if there are uh, several lo log record that is available we must impose the additional requirement on the recovery techniques to ensure that there will be a transaction atomicity so first point is transaction ti enters the commit state after the ti commit log record has been output to the stable storage next before the ti commit log record can be output to a stable storage all the log records pertaining to a transaction ti must have been output to the stable storage next before a block of uh, data in the main memory can be output to the database all the log records that is pertaining to the data in that block must be an output to the stable storage so whatever the data storage that is available in the main memory that is available to the that is going to the stable storage that is available in the data items and this rule is known as the right ahead uh, logging that is a wal rule that is a, that requires that the undo operation in the log has been output to the stable storage and permits the redo operation or redo information to be written into the later so whatever the redo operation whatever the undo operation that is performed in the output storage the difference is irrelevant to the i mean the system where undo operations or undo information and redo information are stored in the separate log files the above three rules state the situation in which certain log records must have the output to the stable storage there is no problem resulting from the output of the log records earlier than the necessary therefore when the system finds it's necessary to output a log record to stable storage it outputs an entire block of log records that is u now writing the buffered log to the disk is sometimes referred to as a log pause now next is the database buffering now uh, how to how to buffer the database or what is the concept that is uh, used in the database buffering so we describe the use of a two level uh, storage already in the section 16.2.2 uh, a system stores the database in a non volatile storage that is uh, whatever the content that is available that is available in the non database storage that is available in the content since the main memory is typically much smaller than the entire database it may be necessary to overwrite a block b1 in main memory then another block b2 needs to be brought in the memory so uh, it is necessary to overwrite a block that is b1 in the main memory when the another block b2 is brought into the memory and if the b1 has been modified the b1 uh, must be uh, prior or must be output prior to the input of the b2 now this is or uh, the there is a standard operating system that is known as a virtual memory that is a memory that is beyond the main memory and whenever there will be a mem main memory that is filled whenever there will be a requirement of the memory that requirement will be fulfilled by the virtual memory so one might expect that the transaction would force output all modified blocks to the disk when they come such a policy is known as the force policy that is forcefully we have done the policies forcefully we have uh, commit the policies the alternative the no force policy allows a transaction to commit even if it has a, it has a modified some block that has been not been returned back to the disk all the recovery algorithm that is used that is not using the no force policy and there is a policy that is not been modified by the transaction but still be the active policy that is known as a no steal policy that is there is no stealing of the pro policy that is available in the data storage and there is a alternative policy that is available that is a steal policy that allows the system to write the modified disk to the disk even if the transaction is failed so this is the t0 start t0 a 1950 now uh, what is the operating system role in the buffer management that is what is the role of the operating system the first point says we can manage the or so the paragraph says we can manage the database buffer by using one of the two approaches so these are the two approaches that is available the first one says the database system reserves part of the main memory to serve as a buffer that is rather than the operating system manage so whatever the database system that reserves or uh, that is uses the main memory to serve as a buffer system that manage it or that uses it 
rather than the operating system managers. So it's database system reserved for main memory to serve as a buffer. The database system manages data uh, block transfer in accordance with the requirement. This approach has the drawback of limiting flexibility in the use of the main memory. So whatever the flexibility, whatever the drawback that is available, that is a limiting flexibility that is available in the main memory. Now the next is the database system implements its buffer within the virtual memory. So first part is reserve some part of the memory uh, for the for the buffer purpose. Then uh, implement the buffer within the main memory or within the virtual memory. So whatever the virtual memory, but whenever we are using the virtual memory, that must be using or that must implement the buffer within the virtual memory that is provided by the operating system. and uh, all the current uh, generation operating system that retains complete control of virtual memory that is available so operating system reserves space on the disk that is available for storing the virtual memory pages that is available on this one that are not currently in the main memory therefore if a database buffer in the uh, virtual memory transfer between the database files and the buffer in the virtual memory must be managed by the database system that enforces the right head overlooking or logging requirement that we discussed. Now, there are some difficult or there are some uh, we can say the drawbacks that is available in the buffer management. So the next topic is the fuzzy checkpointing. That is a checkpointing. That is a fuzzy checkpointing. So the checkpointing technique that is described in section 16.3.6 requires that the all the updates to the database must be in the temporary suspended. That is on the temporary basis it is suspended while the checkpoint is in progress. If the number of pages in the buffer is large, that is if there are multiple um, number of pages that is available in the buffer that is so large, a checkpoint may take a long time to finish which can result in unacceptable interruption in processing of the transaction that is there is no time that is required so but the checkpoint is uh, taking the so much time so there is a solution to this one we use the fuzzy checkpoint that is we can use any any checkpoint that is available that is written on the disk so whatever the uh, content that is required whatever the record that is we can written before the modified buffer block that are written on the disk the checkpoint therefore generated is the fuzzy checkpointing. The last checkpoint information is updated only after the buffer blocks in the list of the modified records have been output to the disk. Even with the fuzzy checkpointing, a buffer block may not be updated while it is output to the disk. Now the next topic is failure from the loss of the non-volatile storage. So whenever we are using the non-volatile storage, what is the uh, what are the various we can say the failures that is used that is with the loss of the non-volatile storage so until now we have considered only the cases where a failure results in the loss of the information residing in the volatile storage so till now we consider only the cases in which the uh, failure occurred in the volatile storage while the contents of the non-volatile storage remain intact Although the failures in which the consent of the or content of the non-volatile storage is lost are rare, we never uh, less need to be prepared to deal with this type of failure. In this section, we discuss only the disk storage. The basic scheme is to dump the entire contents of the database to stable storage periodically. That is, dumping the entire storage, dumping the entire content of the database to the stable storage periodically. That is the main scheme. That is, uh, entire content will be dumped out, entire content will be taken out to a stable storage periodically, that is say, once per day. For example, we may dump the database to one or more magnetic tape. That is, uh, we are using the non-volatile storage, for example, the magnetic tape to store the data on the storage devices. And if a failure occurs that results in the loss of the physical database blocks, the system uses the most current dump in storing the or restoring the database to a previous consisting state. So whatever the content, whatever the content or whatever the scenario that is used, uh, there will be a failure of the database that is available in the database system. One approach to the database dumping requires that no transaction may be active during the dump procedure and uses a procedure similar to the checkpointing. Now, what are the various steps that is available in dumping the or that is available whenever there will be a non-volatile storage that is not used? 
So first is output all the log records currently residing in the main memory onto the stable storage. So whatever the log record that resides in the main memory that will be available or that will carry forward to the stable storage. Then output all the buffer blocks onto the disk. Then copy the contents of the database to the stable storage. So first of all output all the log records to the stable storage. Then output all the buffer blocks to the onto the disk. Then copy the contents of the database to the uh, st uh, stable storage. Then output a log records that is a dump to the stable storage. So these are the four parts that is used. So first of all, the outputting the log records. Then output the buffer blocks onto the disk. Then uh, con copy the content of the database to the stable storage. Then output a log record that is dump on the stable. Steps 1, 2 and 4 correspond to the three steps that is used for the checkpoint. That is a, there are three steps that is used that is a 1, 2 and the 4 that is uh, must be required for using the checkpointing in the section 16.3.6. That is all the rogue records will be designed in the main memory, then all the buffer blocks onto the disk, then output a log record that is dumped into the storage or stable storage. So to recover from the loss of non-volatile storage, the system restores the database to the disk by using the most recent dump. So what is the, whatever, whatever the most recent dump that will be required that will be used by the non-volatile storage. Then it, it consults the log and redoes the, all the actions since the most recent dump occurred. Notice that no undo operations need to be executed. In, cause, in case of a partial failure of a non-volatile storage, such as the failure of a single block or a few blocks, only those blocks that need to be restored and the redo actions performed by only for the blocks. And the dump of the database content is also known as the archival dump. So whatever the dump that is available, that is known as the archival dump. Since we can uh, archive the dump and we can uh, use them later to examine the old states of the database. Then the next point is, most database system also supports a SQL dump. So there will be a SQL dump that is also available which writes out the SQL DDL statements and the SQL insert statements to a file. So there is a SQL dump also that also causes the, that also write out the SQL DDL statements and the SQL insert statement to a file, which then can be re-executed to recreate the database. So there is the SQL statement or there is a SQL dump in which we are using the SQL DDL statement and the SQL insert statement to a file. Such dumps are useful when migrating data to a different instances of the database or to a different versions of the database that is a software since the physical locations and the layout may be different in other database software or the DOS software versions. There are different software versions that is available in the database system. The single dump procedure that is described is closely for the following two reasons. So that is a simple dump that is used that is available is uh, closely because of the following reasons. First of all, the entire database must be copied to the stable storage because uh, whenever there is a need of the dump storage, dump software, there will be a need or that the entire system must be copied to a stable storage that results in the considerable data transfer. Second, since transaction processing is halted during the dump procedure, CPU cycles are wasted. So whenever there will be a transaction processing that is uh, halted for uh, some procedure, the CPU cycles are wasted and fuzzy dump schemes have been developed that allows the transaction to be executed while the dump is in progress. So the while the dump is in progress, that will be executing in the most session. They are similar to the fuzzy checkpointing schemes that is uh, uh, used in the bibliographic notes. Now next is the early log release and the logical undo operations. So this that is the next topic that is how to or when to early uh, log the or when to early release the logs and when to use the logical undo operation. So this topic I am going to take in the next class that is in the tomorrow's class. So let's take a break. Uh, let's <laughs> let's finish the class over here only. And in, in the tomorrow's class, I'm taking the next topic that is the early log release and the logical undo operations. So that's all for today's session. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening me. And if there is any doubt, any suggestions, any advice, you can ask the doubts. You can give the suggestions to me. And one thing, I have already given one assignment that is a e-commerce assignment, and uh, that is already uploaded into the LMS. So please complete that at assignment within the prescribed time. So thanks a lot everyone for listening to me. And uh, Larry, if you want the assignment, I will mail you the assignment.